have you found yourself frustrated recently? Well, if you're anything like me, it happens in my life quite regularly. And it's something I've really been working on. So today I'm going to talk about working through frustration. And if you stay until the very end, I have an extra point for you then as well. Before we, want to, before we dive in today, I just want to mention that if you want to keep up to date with me and my latest content and connect with me, you can find my social media links in the show notes below. Okay, so I've been learning a few really essential skills recently, and some of them are advancing my sales skills, some of them are in certain like, uh, like analytical skills I've been working on, and a big mixture and I found myself getting that in a voice a little bit going like this is frustration you're not doing good enough and I've been like oh, realizing the inner critic's been coming up a little bit and because I've done a lot of personal growth on my work I've realized work on me I've realized there's no end point we're always working ourselves and that inner voice can come up and that's why I realized when I allow frustration it's not that I'm never going to experience frustration but it's about how I work with that frustration and direct it in a more appropriate way. Because that inner talk can really, really knock me down when I get into a bad place. And what I've realized is when we get frustrated, or when I get frustrated, certainly in what I've learned from other people and studying other people, is that we're getting, we don't want the fear of not being good enough to come up when we're learning a new skill. And the fear of not being good enough, therefore, leads to the fear of not being lovable and therefore puts a threat on our survival. So that frustration to be good at something new is something that's really, really I've had challenges with, particularly in the past. And I've always been working through um, because when I'm like learning a new skill, I'm like, I have to learn it. I have to be good at it. Right. And sometimes that's just not the case. Sometimes I'll pick up things a bit more naturally. Sometimes things will take longer. I've also learned, though, that there's areas where I've done really well and I've tried to model what I've done in those areas for other parts of my life. And do you get frustrated? Do you get uh, really annoyed and it's not feeling good for you? Well, I've certainly been there. So wanted to share some quick tips on this today. So the first one is create a greatness list in the back of your book, uh, back of a journal or, or something like that. So. I like to read my my journal every day and I'll just read over the highlights. But one of those lists is a list of the greatness I've had in my life. So things I've overcome from past frustrations, because often I found when I'm coming to a new thing that's that's frustrating or, or challenging and I'm really, I really, that's when like, I won't go too much into the brain science, but the myelin is being produced. So the neurons in your brain connect with each other and then, as you start developing a skill, but there's a lot of frustration as you're, you're doing that and build and learning that new skill. Reminding myself that I've overcome challenges in the past is a really key for me, like passing my driving tests. Maybe you can go back if you pass your driving test, maybe you can picture that. It was like, oh my God, I do this, 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 I'm never going to get this. Oh, go, 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 go. But then suddenly you click and you can drive, right? Well, if you remind yourself of those examples, you remind yourself you are capable of greatness and you can do it again. The second thing is celebrate taking the action right celebrate yourself every single time you take some kind of action because that's going to create feel good chemicals in the body and make you want to do more of it and then the third point i just want to share is making it smaller if you try and make something too large to do when you begin then it's going to be harder and your brain's going to go ah oh, overwhelm instead of making it into small little actionables that's always i have a lot of people coming to me about how do you start a podcast because i run two and i've managed to uh, reach a lot of people and uh, you know create business out of it and uh, most importantly uh, help people in their lives uh, their self-esteem their confidence their mindset so people often come to me and they get about like how do I create a podcast and make like a similar impact or maybe a different impact to people? And they get so overwhelmed and they're like frustrated. They're like, there's all this guidance on podcasting. Blah, 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 there's this. It's like, how do I start? Well, what platform do I use? And I just get them into like taking smaller actions because, and then I even like, if I'm working with them one-on-one, -on -one, I'll, I'll give them like this breakdown plan and action items for them to really launch. So that's the other point I'll share with you. Uh, 
got a final point I want to share. Uh, just before that, I want to mention again, if you want to connect with me more, you can find my social media links in the show notes below. Okay, so my final point is if you really want to go further faster and quicker, get yourself a mentor or a coach. All right, what's the difference? I'll just remind, uh, you might not have heard me talk about this, but the difference between a coach and a mentor, a coach is someone who's very good at guiding you and bringing out your own greatness inside yourself by asking questions, by facilitating conversation. They usually got some experience in an area, but they may not necessarily be better than you, but they may coach in that. They'll get, they'll help you by asking questions, helping you set activities for yourself, keeping you accountable, those kind of things. Now, a mentor is someone who's got an expertise in an area and they're better than you in that, but you go to them so you can build up your greatness towards them. They're more likely to tell you directly what to do. Now, often those roles are combined. Now, if you get yourself a coach or mentor, that's really going to speed things up because you're going to be able to get that feedback. You're going to be able to get that encouragement. So that's what I would guide you to do. Even if it's a group session, even if it's a community, even if you're learning from someone online, get yourself a coach. Obviously, if you're working one on one, um, that's going to be a lot more of an investment, uh, but it is worth it because you get that, that direct um, guidance and feedback from someone. Uh, and that's going to speed you up even more. And I value time more than money personally when I can actually, you know, make it happen. Um, so having that coach or mentor is really going to speed you up and allow you to work through these these challenges, these frustrations you might have. So that's what I got for you today. I just wanted to really share about some of the points that really helped me, even though frustration can pop up now and then, some of the points that really allow me to work through it um, and therefore not let it impact my mental health or my growth as much as it would have done. So I appreciate you for being here. You'll improve the other people in your life by being the best you. And remember to leave with your heart, not with fear.